Welcome to you all for the complex analysis lecture 3. In first two lectures, we discussed about the basic concepts of complex analysis, complex number, as well as we discuss the limit, continuity and differentiability as well as analytic function. And also we show that Cauchy-Riemann equations in Cartesian form. In this uh, lecture, we will discuss starts with an analytic criteria as well as harmonic function. It is starts with a criterion for analyticity. Suppose the real value function u of x comma y and b of x comma y are continuous and you have a continuous first order partial derivatives in a domain D. If u and b satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations at all points of D, then the complex function, the function f of z is equal to u plus iv is analytic in the domain D. Means real and imaginary parts are continuous as well as partial derivative, continuous first order partial derivative means do u by do x and do u by do y and do v by do x and do v by do y are exist. And also it satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equation. Cauchy-Riemann equation means that is dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. If these conditions satisfies, then definitely the function f of z is an analytic function. Now we will give an example related to this. Here the function f of z is equal to x by x square by y x, x by x square plus y square minus i into y by x square plus y square here. First here if you seeing this equation first the function is in the form of f of z is equal to u plus i v. Then we can take this as u and another function as v then this become u is equal to x by x square plus y square and v is equal to minus y by x square plus y square. Here first we can use partial derivative with respect to x u do u by do x means that is you know that if you use quotient rule then the denominator square take denominator in the numerator and differentiate the numerator and minus the derivative of the numerator into differentiate the denominator function and keep in the numerator. That is the rule in the quotient. You can apply, you get this one. Exactly similar way here v is equal to y by x square plus y square. You can differentiate using quotient rule. You get the same result. Means ux means dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y. Exactly similar way if you differentiate partially with respect to y, you get this. And similarly, v with respect to x, then dou v by dou x, you get the negative term of this one. Means here it satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equation. Means dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. Means it is the Cauchy-Riemann equation. But we must remember in the denominator function is non-zero. If denominator function is zero, then what happens here? It become undefined quantity. That's why we must specify that the denominator function is not zero. Means here x square plus y square is if it is zero, what happens? It is this is mod z square is equal to zero. Mod z square means that is equal to zero. We conclude that this function, given function is analytic in any domain containing all the points except z is equal to 0. And also we can find the derivative of that function means f dash z is equal to do u by do x plus i into do e by do x is the principle of derivative with respect to partially then and also with respect to u and v because here it is given you can interchange this then this is the formula to compute the derivative of f of z means if f of z is differentiable at the point 
side. Now we will discuss about the harmonic function. A real valued function phi of x comma y has continuous second order partial derivatives in a domain D and satisfies Laplace equation then we say that it is an harmonic function. What is Laplace equation that is del square phi is equal to 0 is the Laplace equation means what is del square phi here x and y are the variable and phi is a function means it is a second order partial derivative with respect to x and y means that is dou square phi by dou x square plus dou square phi by dou y square is equal to 0 that is the Laplace equation in Cartesian form. Now suppose f of z is equal to u of x comma y plus i into v of x comma y is an analytic in a domain D then the function u of x comma y and v of x comma y are the harmonic function. This is known as a function harmonic functions source or source of a harmonic function means if the function is analytic in a domain real and imaginary parts are harmonic function but converse is not true you must remember here a function f of z is in the form of u plus i v then u and v are harmonic how to prove this we assume that u and v are continuous second order derivative means it satisfies the, if we satisfy the Laplace equation then we say that it is harmonic. What is given here the function is analytic. If it analytic means it satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations. What are Cauchy-Riemann equations? Cauchy-Riemann equations are dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y is equal to minus dou v by dou x. This is the given function. What is to prove? Here we find the second order derivative or Laplace equation. It satisfies the Laplace equation with respect to u and v. Here we can, we take the first this one, partially differentiate with respect to x again that become dou square u by dou x square and this become mixed derivative with respect to x and y means that is dou square v by dou x into dou y and similarly here also dou square u by dou y square is equal to minus dou square v by dou y into dou x. We know that mixed derivatives are equal. Mixed derivatives are equal means here this and this are equal then we can right hand sides are equal means definitely left hand side is also equal. Then if you take that one or substitution any one of the method then we get dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square is equal to 0 means it is del square u is equal to 0. What is del square u is equal to 0 means it is a Laplace equation means u is harmonic. Exactly similar way if you partially differentiate with respect to y here then that is dou square v by dou y square and dou square u by dou x into dou y mixed derivative and similarly here dou square v by dou x square is equal to dou square u by dou y into dou x means mixed derivative again here left hand sides are equal right hand side is also equal we get the dou square v by dou x square plus dou square v by dou y square is equal to 0 means here v is harmonics means the function is analytic then definitely its real and imaginary parts are harmonic function. Now we will discuss about the conjugate harmonic function. If u and v are harmonic in D and u of x comma y plus i into v of x comma y is an analytic function in D then u and v are called the conjugate harmonic function of each other. We will give one example related to harmonic. Verify u of x comma y is equal to x cubed minus 3xy square minus 5y is harmonic in the entire complex plane and also find the conjugate harmonic function of u. 
first harmonic means del square u del square u is equal to 0 means harmonic means it satisfies the laplace equation means first we find dou square u by dou x and dou square u by dou y and second order derivative means here dou square u by dou x means here x power n form that is n into x to the power of n minus 1 that is 3 into x square minus here this is 1 3 y square again if you differentiate partially with respect to x here this become dou square u by dou x square become 6x and dou u by dou y is equal to minus 6xy minus 5 because this is 1 dy by dy that become 1 and dou square u by dou y square means here with respect to y we are differentiating partially we get minus 6x then if you adding these two then you get dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square means it is a Laplace condition that is 6x minus 6x means that is 0 means definitely u is harmonic now we can find the conjugate function means first you can take the given function because it is an analytic means dou v by dou y is equal to dou u by dou x you can express in terms of u then 3x square minus 3y square here we are partially with respect to differentiate partially with respect to sorry integrating with respect to y means integrating with respect to y means derivative become cancelled that is v of x comma y become 3x square y minus this y square become y to the power of n formula y n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 means y power 3 divided by 3 3 3 become cancel you get y cube but here we treated x as a constant that's why we put h of x similar way here also we can partially differentiating with sorry, integrating with respect to x means this becomes 6 x square by 2 y plus 5 x then this become what happens 3 x square y plus plus 5 x means comparing these two then the function become 3 x square y minus 5 y cube plus 5 y cube plus 5 x and there is a some constant this is the one way or other way is we can rearranging the function find the constants instead of that we can make directly we can integrating with this one now we will give some examples related to some important function that is starts with an exponential and logarithmic function what is exponential function the function is in the form of e power x has the property f dash x become f of x because if you differentiate the exponential function e power x the first derivative is e power x again second derivative is also e power x etc e power x again it is same means f of x1 plus x2 can be written as f of x1 into f of x2 we know that Euler's formula what is Euler's formula e power i y can be expressed in terms of trigonometric function that is cos y plus i sin y here y is a real number this is the formula of a Euler now here e power x means e power x plus e power i y means that is e power x and e power i y means that is cos y plus i sin y then if you make this one as e power x into e power z e power z is equal to e power x plus i y then we can express e power z in terms of exponential and trigonometric function that is e power x into cos y plus i sin y here you can evaluate this this is a simple example related to complex exponential function e power z here e power 1 plus uh, 1.7 plus 4.2 into i means first x is equal to 1.7 y is equal to 4.2 if you substitute you get a result for this similarly if you differentiate the the rules of a differentiation 
we already d by dz of e power z is e power z, e power z1 and e power z2 is e power z1 plus z2 and e power z1 divided by e power z2 is e power z1 minus z2. If the periodicity of a exponential functions are e power z plus 2, 2 pi i means e power z into e power 2 pi i means e power z into e power 2 pi i means that is cos 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi that is same as this is cos 2 pi and this is 1 then definitely it is e power z polar form of a complex number z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta is equal to r into e power i theta is known as a polar form of a complex number we discussed already. In a logarithmic function, any complex number we express in terms of x plus i bar. z is equal to x plus i bar then z is not equal to 0 we define w is equal to ln of z means logarithmic function of z if z is equal to e power w then w is equal to e u plus i v then this w can be written as x plus i y and e power u plus i v then e power u into e power i v can be written as using Euler's formula cos v plus i sin v then if you separating this e power u into cos v plus i into e power u into sin v. Then if you separating real and imaginary parts then x can be expressed as e power u cos v and y is equal to e power u into sin v. You know that e power 2u can, can be written as that is x square plus y square. If you make x square plus y square means e power e power u into cos square, cos square v and e power u into sin square v. You know that cos square v plus sin square v is equal to 1 then e power 2u will be remain then that become x square plus y square. x square plus y square is a modulus that is mod z square that is same as r square. Here u is the logarithmic function of log e power z. You know that z is equal to e power z w means e power z log, log z is equal to w or we can write it as u is equal to log mod z and tan v is equal to y by x v is equal to theta plus 2n pi theta is an argument of the function n running from 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. Now we can express the logarithmic function of complex number this way. For z is non-zero and theta is equal to argument of z and ln of z is equal to log mod z plus i into theta plus 2n pi r. Sometimes we are expressing 2n pi plus theta. n is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. We give some examples related to this logarithmic function. Find the values of ln of minus 2, ln i and ln minus 1 minus i means using the previous uh, formula here we can express this one. Theta is equal to argument of the minus 2 that is same as pi and log e power minus 2 is 0 0.6932 and ln of minus 2 is we can express in this way. Similarly, we can log i, argument of i is pi by 2 and ln of 1 because 1 is the y that is e 0 then ln of i is equal to i times pi by 2 plus 2n pi. Similarly, another examples also express. Find the values of z such that e power z is equal to root 3 plus i means First, we can make it into ln form that is ln of root 3 plus i and mod root 3 plus i means root of x is root 3 plus whole square means 3 plus 1 that is root 4 that is 2. Then argument is root 3 plus i means 
tan inverse y by x form that is root 3 by 1 you get that is tan inverse pi by 6 then you can substitute in that formula you get the result Similarly, the principal value is ln z is log mod z plus i times argument of z. And always argument of z is lying between minus pi to pi, that is minus pi to pi is unique. There is only one value in ln z for which z is non-zero. The find the principal values for the following examples. Argument of minus 2 is pi ln of minus 2 is 0 0.6932 plus i pi. Each function in the collection of ln z is called the branch. The function ln z is called the principal branch or principal logarithmic function. Some familiar properties of a logarithmic function holds in complex cases also. You know that in a logarithmic function what we are utilized here also ln of z1 z2 is ln of z1 plus ln of z2 ln of z1 by z2 is ln of z1 minus ln of z2 and here we give us some examples related to that suppose z1 is equal to 1 and z2 is equal to minus 1 we can take ln of z1 is 2 pi i and z2 is pi i we get if you simplifying this ln of z1 z2 the properties we previous uh, here we use in the equation 8 using that properties we can verify easily that is ln of z1 z2 is ln of minus 1 that is ln of z1 plus z2 that is 3 pi i so exactly similar way we can verify the other one also now we will discuss about the analyticity of this logarithmic function the function ln of z is not analytic at z is equal to 0 since ln of 0 is not defined. Moreover, ln of z is discontinuous at all the points of the negative real axis since ln z is a principal value of ln z, small ln z. The non-positive real axis is referred to as a branch cut here. This is the diagram of branch cut in the ln of z. It is, we give a one example, if to exercise d by d of ln z is 1 by z for all z in d. The complex plane except those on the non-negative, non-positive real axis. Now we will deal with some of the complex powers. We utilize in the analytic function in the exponential variables. In real variables, we have x power alpha is e power alpha ln x. If alpha is a complex number, z is equal to x plus i y. We have z power alpha is e power alpha into ln z, then z is non-zero. Here, in these type of problems, it is useful for some competitive examination for finding the value of this i power to i. With z is equal to i and argument of z is pi by 2, alpha is equal to 2i from the above equation. Then i power 2i can be expressed as e power 2i into log e power 1 plus i pi then if you simplify this you get e power minus 1 plus 4n into pi. Now we will discuss the trigonometric and relationship between the hyperbolic function. Using Euler's formula sin and cos x can be expressed in terms of exponentially. Here you know that in the trigonometric relationship sin x and exponential function sin x is equal to e power i x minus e power minus i x by 2i and cos x is equal to e power i x plus e power minus i x by 2. In terms of the complex variable for any complex number can be expressed in terms of z z is equal to x plus i y sin z and cos z can be expressed as 
e power i z minus e power minus i z by 2 i cos z can be expressed as e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2. You know that the trigonometric identities tan, cot, and secant, and cosecant z can be expressed in the following way. And using the Ebo relationship, we can modify the terms. Now we will discuss about the analyticity of an entire function of exponential. Since e power i z and e power minus z are entire function, and sin z and cos z also entire function. Besides, sin z is 0 only for the real number z is equal to n pi and cos z is equal to 0 only for the real numbers z is equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. If you put n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., you get a same values for that. Thus, tan z and second z are also analytic except this value z is equal to 2n plus 1 times pi by 2. And cot z, cot z and cosecant z are analytic except at z is equal to n pi. These are the derivatives exactly similar way whatever we discussed in the real analysis same way here also d by dz of sin z is cos z cos z is minus sin z, tan z is equal to secant square z, cot z is equal to minus cosecant square z and secant z is secant z into tan z, cosecant z is equal to minus cosecant z into cot z and the relationship between sin of a plus b and sin of a minus b relationship and also trigonometric identity cos square z plus sin square z is equal to 1 and sin 2z can be expressed as 2 sin z into cos z cos 2z can be expressed as cos square z minus sin square z. These are the some important identities related to sin and cos function. Now we will discuss some zeros of this function. If y is a real, we have e power y minus e power minus y by 2 e sin hyperbolic y and cos hyperbolic cos func y means that is cos h y means cos hyperbolic function e power y plus e power minus y. Using that relationship, we can make a sin z and we can express and rearrangement then we can get the sin z cos z and the the relationship between hyperbolic function relation also we can verify easily. We give some simple examples related to this sine of 2 plus i that is sine of a plus b formula that is sine a cos b cos a plus i cos a sine b form but here you know that sine of i is i sine i y then we get this is cos 2 plus sine hyperbolic 1 minus this comes here, that is i will come outside then we get this relationship. Similarly can solve the values of cos z. Cos z is equal to e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2. Then we can simplify in terms of e power means e power i z is x square form then put x and solve this quadratic equation you get a relationship with this is the roots then simplify after getting this value substitute in the standard form exactly similar way since because log of 10 minus 3 root 3 is minus 10 then we can substitute directly exactly similar way sine and cosine function hyperbolic function also express in terms of complex z is equal to x plus i y these are the relationship sine hyperbolic z and cos hyperbolic z is as follows exactly the additional functions hyperbolic related to tan cot secant and cosecant z are expressed in this way and also derivative function of sine cos and what about the sine z is minus i sine hyperbolic i z cos z is cos hyperbolic i z if you take sine hyperbolic z in terms of sine i z we can express in this way.
and then finally using sine hyperbolic z is in this form sine, sine of minus y is minus sine y cos of minus y is cos y then the relationship if you using this zeros of sine hyperbolic z and cos hyperbolic z are z is equal to n pi i and z is equal to 2n plus 1 into pi i by 2 n is equal to 0 plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 etc. Finally, we find the periodicity of that sine of z plus 2 pi i here this 2 pi is called the period of the function sine of x z can be expressed as x plus i y plus 2 pi then sine of a plus b form then sine a cos b plus cos a sine b form then using the relationship of hyperbolic current uh, hyperbolic current cos ix form then it become in this form sine of high y is cos high y cos high y and cos of uh, sine of i y i into sine hyperbolic y then this is same as sine z sine of z plus 2i is sine z means this 2 pi is called the periodicity or period of sine z so exactly similar way we can find the inverse trigonometric and hyperbolic function inverse of sin z is z is equal to sin w means w is equal to sin inverse z then e power z again here we can make it into a quadratic form and solve the equation and simplify you get sin inverse z is in this way similar way cos inverse z is minus i ln of this one tan inverse z can be expressed in this way tan inverse z is equal to i by 2 ln of i plus z divided by i minus it means sin inverse z by cos inverse z is tan inverse z. Now we will give some examples related to this. Find the values of sin inverse by substituting in the direct standard form we get the relationship. First we find the substitute and find the values of corresponding values you get the relationship. This is the final value of sine inverse root phi is pi by 2 plus 2 n pi plus or minus i log e power root phi plus 2. In the trigonometric derivative sine inverse z is sine inverse z and cos inverse z means inverse trigonometric that is exactly similar way d by dz of sine inverse z is 1 by z square whole power root of 1 by z square and cos inverse z is minus 1 by root of 1 minus z square exactly similar way whatever we studied in the real analysis the values corresponding to these are some of the examples related to derivative of sine inverse z at particular point z is equal to root 5 and inverse trigonometric function we already discussed these are the sine hyperbolic z, cos hyperbolic z, and tan inverse, uh, tan hyperbolic inverse of the function are expressed. And some of the examples related to cos hyperbolic, inverse hyperbolic function of cos of minus 1. These are the relationship using the formula and substitute you get the values. Finally, we will discuss some sequences. Detailed discussion will be considered in the next classes. I will discuss the a sequence of a complex numbers denoted by Zn 1 to k is a function of f such that function f mapping from n to c it is a function whose domain is a set of natural numbers between 1 and k whose range is the subset of the complex numbers. If k is equal to infinity, then the sequence is called infinite and it is denoted by Zn 1 to infinity or more often. Then the notion Fn is equivalent. The detailed discussion will be discussed in the next classes. Thank you.